I have sped up the process a little bit here. Hopefully you figured out that it may be worth your time to get up and make a sandwich while you're waiting on it to generate the baseline HDR image. It takes a few minutes, but in any case, don't uh, pay any attention to the screen. I'm not sure why they even show it. it it's completely useless to you, so do, just ignore this. It's going to look like crap every time. It's perfectly normal. Just hit the button that says tone mapping right over here. This is where a lot of people get lost, and you really need to not worry about this a whole lot because it's a lot simpler than it looks. And really, you have two options that are major importance. You have your details enhancer or your tone compressor. Tone compressor, as you can tell, gives a much more smooth, natural look. I don't care for it. It's uh, there's there's not a whole lot of stylistic difference between that and just a normal picture. So that's not really what I want. I like to use details enhancer. Do be aware, though, the tone compressor will provide you with a lot less noise in your picture. And temperature, I always try to leave at zero point zero. Really, if you're going to adjust your color temperature, you don't want to do it here. You want to do that in Photoshop. And all these other settings, honestly, I never touch them. It, there's not a whole lot of point in changing things up too much here. You can experiment a little. There's no danger in that. But really, I find that with the exception of a few landscapes, I always end up doing the exact same thing, and I usually batch process my HDR. So I, it's just that much the same. But I'm going to close my histogram here so you can see the corner of the picture. And on the left side here, our first options are strength, color saturation, luminosity, and microcontrast. All right, strength, I usually leave around 90. Color saturation, I leave around 80. Luminosity and microcontrast, I always leave at 10. I like luminosity at 10 because it really boosts how bright the picture is which matters and micro contrast affects how how gritty of a look it has it's it's hard to explain but it it's a measure of how strong the details are emphasized as far as strength goes it's more of a matter of how things are applied how strongly the HDR effect is applied and color saturation is pretty self-explanatory. But uh, an, uh, one place where you do really have a, a critical crossroads, depending on what you want to do with it, is your smoothing tab here. And in the newer Photomatics, is the, uh, the three-point whatever versions, you have this new slider here. And it's a lot more akin to the tone compressor. So naturally, I don't like it much. I stay on the light mode with the uh, high button selected. Once again, I batch process almost everything I do in Photomatics. It just, it all comes out about the same and it's not real great. You're going to have to spend a little bit of time in Photoshop on it anyway. But coming down, we have white point and black point. Just leave them at the defaults. Once again, it's easier to do it in Photoshop than it is here. Gamma, uh, this affects how far your tonal ranges can go in the picture, and leave it around one, you know, uh, I'll go a tenth of a, a point in either direction, depending on what the picture looks like, but most of the time, just anywhere you leave it in that range will be pretty good, between 1.1 and 0.9. And like I said before, temperature, unless it's really, really off, you want to avoid working on it here because it'll just make things simpler. And I never play around with all these, uh, the saturation highlights, saturation shadows, the miscellaneous settings. Don't waste your time. We'll, we'll get to making it look good later. But just hit process. And now we're going to wait again. Okay, you can see that now we've got our image tone map and ready to be shipped out. 
and what you need to do here is go to file and hit save as and right down here you need to make sure you change this off of the default it's going to default to JPEG which is just going to give you absolutely horrible quality uh, I, I would recommend the 16-bit TIFF but if you don't want to have to go through an extra step you can make it an 8-bit TIFF and it's not going to make a huge difference so I'm going to leave that on 16-bit TIFF I'm going to change the name so it doesn't overwrite my other one but just hit save of course I'm going to hit cancel so it doesn't overwrite anything Until it now. and that's pretty much it for photomatics and as you can see that does not quite look like the finished product and that's because it's not this picture here is basically what we got out of photomatics and this is something more like what we get to uh, my photography is far from perfect but the this is a lot better than what photomax was spitting out so we want to avoid something that's very dull and flat like this and we want to get to something that's a little more dynamic and interesting if you forget